Do you have the life you want or do you just have the life you got? See, I think a lot of us, we're not living the life we want, we're living the life we've got. And the reason we never live the life that we want is because we don't know what we want. And God keeps waiting, ask me, what are your dreams? What's your vision? What burdens you? What fills you with passion? What sets you on fire? Ask me for something bigger than you so that I can show up and be God in your life. And I wonder today, do you know what you want? Because if you don't know what you want, don't get mad at God that he never gives you what you need. Because if Jesus encounters two blind men walking as he walks down through Jericho, and they cry out to him, have mercy on us. And he stops and says, I'm gonna ask you a question. And when I ask you this question, I need you to really think this through. Because you have a moment with the creator of the universe. What do you want me to do for you? I think a lot of us are terrified to ask God to do big things in us and through us and for us because it might prove that God does not exist. And so we pray small prayers that we can actually fulfill ourselves. We, we pray prayers that, that won't get God in, in trouble, won't put God in a dilemma because we don't want to push God into a corner where we ask him to be God and we find out he's less than we thought. But God does not need you to protect him or his reputation. God is bigger than your prayers. He's bigger than your dreams. He's bigger than your challenges. He's bigger than your fears. He's bigger than your doubts. He's bigger than you. And he's waiting for you and for me to call on him as the God that he is and ask big dreams and big prayers and call for big visions. God is looking for the person who's not afraid of the big ask. Do you know what you want? I don't think it's incidental that when they're shouting out to Jesus, the crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. You know what I've discovered in my own life? Is that when you ask God for big things, people don't start cheering you on. See, it's, it's really important to pray humble prayers so that you don't think too much of yourself. Because if you start praying big prayers, people look at you and say, who do you think you are praying a prayer that big? Who do you think you are asking God to give you your sight? I mean, after all, you are no one. These two men do not even have names. They don't show up on any record. Why would Jesus take the time and energy and effort to give them sight when, when there's nothing about them after this? Doesn't Jesus only answer big prayers for big people? And so they rebuked them because they did not feel that they were worthy of asking Jesus for so great a thing. See, I think a lot of us feel like those blind men on the side of the road. And, and we don't want to be intrusive on God. We don't want to ask God for more than we should or more than we deserve or more than we ought to. And so we keep our prayers humble so that no one will think we think too much of ourselves. If no one is rebuking you for your prayers, your prayers are too small. If no one is looking at you with some suspicion, looking at you saying, who do you think you are praying that kind of prayer? Who do you think you are having that kind of dream? Who do you think you are expecting God to give you that big a life? And you can respond, I know who I am. I'm just a blind beggar on the side of the road, but Jesus is walking by and I'm not gonna get lost in the crowd. Because it's not who I am. It's who he is. I grew up reading every mythology book in the library, and I had no idea who God was. So I didn't know how this worked out. I, I never really knew who Jesus was until I was around 20 years old, and someone handed me a Bible, and they told me that God was the God of the Scriptures, and if I would pray, God would hear my prayers. If I would believe that, that God would, would honor my faith, my trust in Him. 
But I wasn't sure how it all worked out. And, and, and here I am trying to live my life now for Jesus and trying to, to, to bring him honor and pleasure and to help people come to know him. You ever have something terrible happen in your life when you think you're doing everything right? So here I'm in college, and I'm trying to talk to everybody about who Jesus is, and they also played on the soccer team, and, and I have bad knees, and I got hit really hard in a particular match. I had to take me over to the hospital, and, and that night I was in so much pain, and my roommate had built a loft in the dorm room where we slept up high so we could turn the bottom into a living room. And in the middle of the night, I just kept rolling back and forth and back and forth because I was in so much pain. And before I even realized it, I rolled out of that loft and I fell right on top of my roommate's army surplus locker. They make those things so solid. And I hit that metal corner with my elbow and when I hit that thing, it broke the radial head off my elbow. And my roommate, whose major was sports therapy, just laid there. And as I moaned and groaned on the floor, he finally said, did you drop something? <laughs> I go, no. And he goes, is that you? And I go, yeah. He goes, okay. I said, I think I need to go to the hospital. He goes, I'll take you in the morning. <laughs> A lot of love there. So I laid there all night, cold sweats, fever, agonizing pain. In the morning, I got myself to the hospital. And they x-rayed my body and they told me that I would never move my arm for the rest of my life. And the only expression I had of my faith at that time was I was a musician and, and so I would write music and play the guitar and sing and do these festivals and concerts and, and now I'm told that my arm is stuck and I would never move it again. I'm in sports rehabilitation at the University of North Carolina Medical Center and they're graphing my movement at zero, 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 zero. And I cannot tell you how confusing that was to me. Say, Jesus, I, I trusted you with my life and I'm, I'm trying to, to, to give everything I have and, and I'm just 21 years old and I am broken. And then I got a phone call. This, this festival is coming from Canada to North Carolina and they heard about me so they wanted me to perform at their festival and, and I had just broken my arm a couple days before and when they asked me if I, could, if I would perform, I just said, I'll be there. I didn't know how I was gonna be there. I didn't know how I was gonna play. I just said, I'll be there. And I hung up the phone, I, I sat down on the sofa and I grabbed my guitar and I put her on my lap and I prayed the biggest prayer I'd ever prayed in my life up to that point. I said, Jesus, I just wanna play for you. I just wanna do this so that I can declare your name. And I, I said, Jesus, would you just move my arm to the guitar strings so that I could at least play the guitar? That's all I'm asking. I just ask you to move my arm from, from where it's stuck to the strings so I could play. And in that moment, I cannot explain this to you, but in that moment, my arm moved from where it was stuck and it just instantly moved right to the guitar strings. And I, I was overwhelmed. I thought, I cannot believe, God, you could answer a prayer so fast. <laughs> and then I had this thought. That was the stupidest prayer I've ever prayed in my whole life. I could almost hear God. Like, watch this. He's about to pray, and I'm about to heal him. Watch. I'm going to do a God-sized thing. But I didn't have a God-sized prayer. I said, God... Jesus, could you just move my arm? It's just over here. It's like, I'm not asking you for a whole lot. You could probably assign this to a middle manager. I, you know, it's just... <laughs> and when I moved my arm right here, I had this thought, I realized, what was I thinking? If God would move my arm from here to here, if he would heal my arm that much, I'm pretty sure he was ready to heal my arm completely. I remember when I went back to the hospital and they measured my mobility and they said, all right, let's, let's see what you got. Zero, 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 zero every single day. And I go, how do you want me to move my arm? Like this, like this? Because I was so new, I didn't know any better and I told them all about Jesus and how he healed me. See, I, I, I think a lot of us, we pray prayers that actually reveal our lack of faith in what God wants to do in us. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want? What kind of life do you want? 
Do you have the life you want or do you just have the life you got? See, I think a lot of us, we're not living the life we want, we're living the life we've got. And the reason we never live the life that we want is because we don't know what we want. And God keeps waiting, ask me, what are your dreams? What's your vision? What burdens you? What fills you with passion? What sets you on fire? Ask me for something bigger than you so that I can show up and be God in your life. And you need to open up your heart and open up your mind and open up your soul and open up your dreams, open up your imagination and stop trying to make God as small as you and let God make you as big as him. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.